Welcome, welcome to the Lenten service here at Nokomis Heights Lutheran Church. We're so glad you're joining us and we want you to know that we're thinking about you and praying for you all the time. This year, our Lenten service theme is Encounters with Christ. So you'll notice that when we do the message part of the service, the messages are all in first person and they're based on people who encountered Christ. So take a seat, get comfortable. Our hope is that you encounter Christ through these services. We're so glad you joined us. Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your
this evening comes from the book of Luke, chapter 7, verses 36 through 50. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. And a woman in the city, who was a sinner, having learned that he was eating in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment. She stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to bathe his feet with her tears and to dry them with her hair. Then she continued kissing his feet and anointing them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what kind of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus spoke up and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. Teacher, he replied, speak. A certain creditor had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debts for both of them. Now, which, will, which of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the greater debt. And Jesus said to him, you have judged rightly. Then turning towards the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house, you gave me no water for my feet, but she has bathed my feet and with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which were many, have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. But those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. I thought I knew exactly who I was. I thought I knew exactly my place in society, my value, my worth, and my station. I wasn't particularly special in any way, but I'd worked hard to get where I was at. I was proud of myself for my accomplishments, humble though they may be. Sure, Pharisees were a dime a dozen, but I made a name for myself among them. I knew the law of Moses by heart and could write, recite the Torah backwards. I was careful to keep good company and play nicely with others, but wasn't afraid to stir up a good debate or a controversy. I always came out on the right side of the law because the best Pharisees knew how to live by the law. When I heard about the miracle man who came to town, I wanted in on the action. I prided myself as one who can read a person's character well. I wanted to see for myself if he was as phenomenal as his reputation proclaimed. So I casually invited him to my house for a snack. Nothing fancy, it's not like he was the head priest or anything. To be honest, I wanted to see what all the fuss was, to see this prophet everyone was talking about. Just as I was about to broach the topic of which laws were the most esteemed, the Mishnah, the Torah, or the Sulk and Aruk, she walked in. My heart stopped dead in my chest. What was she doing here? I didn't invite her. I looked at her and then to Jesus, about to apologize for the disruption. It was embarrassing. But Jesus' expression silenced my protests. He wasn't offended. 
She wasn't disgusted. He wasn't even repelled when she crouched down to his feet and began washing them with her tears and drying them with her hair. I thought to myself, this is no prophet. If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and the kind of woman this was who was touching him, that she was a sinner. Don't ask me how I knew she was a sinner. I just did. As, the man of, as a man of the cloth and as an ambassador for God, I would never have been in the same room with a woman like her, let alone to have her touching my feet. I was distinguished, and she did not belong among the distinguished. But before I had the chance to send her away, Jesus looked across the table toward me and said, Simon, I have something to say to you. Then he told me this children's story about two debtors who each owed money. One owed a little or a lot more than the other, and neither one could pay their debts, but the creditor forgave them both. And then Jesus asked me, which of them will love him more? I could hardly understand the question. I, I love him more. Who loves their creditor? Nevertheless, it seemed the answer was obvious. So I said, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the greater debt? I barely had time to congratulate myself for passing the test that Jesus, then Jesus continued. He began comparing my actions with the woman's actions. He was comparing me to this woman. You gave me no water for my feet. You gave me no kiss. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. She has not stopped kissing my feet since she came in. She anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, he said to me, her sins, which are many, have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown great love. I've got to admit, it took me days, weeks, to understand what Jesus was saying. She was forgiven much, and so she loved much. I, I, on the other hand, was forgiven little because I believed I had nothing to be forgiven for. His voice rang through my head over and over, but the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. I stewed over this for weeks. I lost sleep. I couldn't eat. I stopped going out in public. I couldn't get the image of the woman out of my mind how she cradled Jesus' feet, how her tears flowed unabashedly, how little she cared about etiquette and appearances. I didn't notice it at first, but eventually I realized she didn't cry in shame or sorrow. She was crying from gratitude and love. I wonder, have you ever seen such a sight? Someone so uninhibited by societal norms, or unbound by convention, civility, protocol, and decorum. Someone so present to her joy, so set free in her emotion, so deeply and stunningly authentic. She didn't spend every waking hour trying to convince the world that she had it together, 
figured out, perfected. She wasn't exhausted trying to prove herself to the world. Unlike me, every day I watch my every step. I'm careful about how I dress, where I walk, how I hold my posture, the presence of, and the precision of my word choice, the air of my authority that I project, the image I project, the confidence I project, all this to convince the world and myself that I'm worthy of their respect, their honor, their veneration. And for what? Here's the thing, it didn't work. I was constantly petrified of being found out. I suffered from imposter syndrome when a person is deeply afraid of being discovered a fraud. I was a fraud. I failed every day, every day I broke a law, every day I got it wrong, but I was a master at hiding my failures and, and talking my way out of my guilt. If I was to be honest, I owed a big debt, probably bigger than the woman. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. You know, Jesus was right. I loved little. I didn't love God because I was too busy playing God. I didn't love others because I was too busy trying to be their God. And I didn't love myself because I carried a weighty and shameful secret. I was a sinner. I am a sinner. So one night I got down on my knees and I wept. I wept so long and hard, there were puddles around my feet. I hurt deep down inside for all the ways I'd failed, but even more for how much I hated myself. And that's when I remembered her. She wept too, because she was forgiven so much. And when she was forgiven, she was able to love. I could sense the invitation stirring inside me to beg for forgiveness, to know love again, to know God again to live free again. I'm so grateful for Jesus that night, for the story he told me, for the way he penetrated my heart and broke through that thick casing that kept love at bay. And I will never forget the day a woman like she taught a man like me to know the great, forgiving, redeeming love of Jesus.
merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life. Give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. 